Thorin Stonehelm has joined the battle for Middle Earth as he is the new custom general has been added for Dawnless Day's Total War. And oh boy, does he look glorious. Look at that armor. I mean, God, the golden armor is just sort of like jewel encrusted sort of shoulder, uh, like, uh, like arm guards there. And he's got his. Uh, Glorious looking crown. I mean, yeah, if you don't know much about Thorin, he's Thorin the third. He is um, the son of Dane. And after Dane dies at the Battle of Dale, he uh, ascends the throne of Erebor and helps defeat the armies of the Eastlings and the uh, armies of Orcs that are attacking Dale and Erebor in the War of the Ring. So, yeah, he is the. Uh, he's not Thorin Oakenshield. Uh, he is, in fact, a Thorin Stonehelm. But, uh, yeah, he's a very, very. A uh, cool character, and he is leading today's Dwarven army. As it looks like, yeah, we've got Thorin the Third, Stonehelm. He's got Dwarven Barrack Guard as his bodyguard. Shape is maybe like a unique uh, unit, but I feel like Barrack Guard also works pretty well. And uh, yeah, he is leading Erebor's armies here today. We've got Iron Guards, we've got Iron Hill Crossbows, Erebor Axes, Dwarven Warriors. Uh, yeah, Dwarven Warriors, lots we of, lots of the them, and Erebor uh, Warriors here, and they are facing off against the we Goblins, and they have their Wargs, they have a Warg pack here, which is just, I believe these are just like, yeah, these are uh, just Wargs on their own, they don't even have a uh, mounted sort of, uh, well, they don't have men on them, and they're being attacked by Escort Mercenaries here, and then we have Gundabad Wargs here, which are uh, Light Wargs as well. They're looking very, very cool as well. And there you go, the Escort Mercenaries going into action, trying to deal with these beasts of war. So yes, if you're enjoying seeing Dawn's Days on the channel, like some more, then do remember to leave a like, subscribe if you're new around here, and a comment to show your support, guys. It really does help out the channel. And yeah, this is another replay that the dev sent me from um, a testers game. And yeah, so we've got Erebor being shown off as they have a new unit. And also uh, more wargs being shown off, which is obviously very important to uh, to see. Yeah, and the goblins have them as well. It's obviously also great fun uh, because I feel like it adds a bit of uh, mobility for them. And yeah, they have weird like um, wargs without mounts. It's very very cool. I do like that as a uh, well without like riders is what I meant. Without mounts would mean that it'd just be orcs. And we've got uh, mountain trolls here moving forward. We've got two units of those. And also we're going to see a large force of Gundabad wargs here and also mountain marauders moving around onto that flank there. It looks like Doran is going to defend sort of like uh, this hilltop here around this sort of stone formation, which is going to be very, very cool to see. And then we've got uh, Goblin Blade Warriors, High Chieftain Scars, and then we have the new general for the goblins, which is Goblin Bodyguard. So it's a, a shock infantry unit. Uh, we have something similar to this, I feel like, in a various sub mods. But yeah, we have Goblin Bodyguards here, Tier 4 unit. Looking very badass. We'll go to slow mo so and get a real good look at this. But yeah, look at them. Look at the helmets that they have going on. They're looking like devils or something like that. But they are awesome. Yeah, this is a new unit that's been added. And uh, yeah, it just gives a little bit more shock ability. I don't know if they have these guys available as. Um I, I think they have these guys available as just like typical infantry as well, like typical shock infantry. Which is uh, quite cool. Uh, it just adds a little bit more bite to uh, the goblins. And uh, yeah, we've got a goblin heavy archers. It's already pretty nasty. And we have scavenged crossbows, which also I'm pretty sure these are new as well. I think like scavenged crossbows also being a, a, a new addition. I can't remember them being in um, before. The dwarves have also got artillery here, which is cool that they brought this. I'm kind of glad to see that the uh, dwarven giant bliss being brought. I think it's going to start firing at these uh, mountain trolls here. And as you can tell that the uh, wargs have come out of that fight, the escort mercies did not. And they are all bloodied up now. They've got the taste of dwarven flesh. Well, actually more of like man flesh they got. Um, but yes, they're also after the dwarves and their flesh. We want to feast on them. The mountain trolls are getting focused on. I imagine that, you know, they're doing some damage to these guys, but we'll see. And as you can see, the goblins are pretty much encircled the dwarves up here. It looks like we're going to see Stonehelm go into the fight pretty early on here. And we've got, yeah, Gunbad Wargs and Mountain Marauders uh, up here ready to go. We'll see how they can do. Looks like the crossbows trying to duel with the Erebor crossbows. Looks like, I mean, Erebor's crossbows are much more armored. They should win this fight, I'd imagine. They've got a better, look at the angle they've got as well. Firing from a nice hill up here. Very, very nice. They are getting hit hard, though, from Goblin Heavy Archers, which is actually what's really doing the damage. And it looks like we're going to see the trolls go into action pretty soon. They are getting shot at 
by the blister and they just don't want to hang around there, that's for sure. Uh, Dwarven Warriors here fighting battle. against Goblin Blade Warriors. This is a shameful display. I thought they'd do okay, they might be able to hold, but we'll see. The cross was there being beaten back. I think they were getting 2v1, that was the problem. And here we go, Ingo the Wargs are going to go in for the uh, the Erebor Axe Warriors here by the looks of it. And here we go, see how they do all the charge. Okay, they did okay. I mean, I don't know how much they're going to do really any damage. They killed a couple of these guys on impact. Yeah, like three dwarves died in that charge. So, yeah, maybe not really want a unit you want to be charging against dwarven infantry. Maybe if it's already engaged, you might charge them. But probably not if they've... Uh, they're just charging them like this. But there you go. In go the goblins on a lot of other thr fronts here. They had a lot more success with the dwarves here against dwarven warriors. They are less armored. They're in there trying to cut those guys down. You can see the barrack guard trying to get in there and get in there. Oh, those axe guards actually, not the barrack guard. Yeah, mountain warders fighting in here with the wargs against the goblin, uh, against the uh, dwarves. And Stonehelm's getting stuck in as well, it seems. As, uh, and he's got to do as much work as he can. You can see the, gold, uh, the good and bad walks here are dying to those axe infantry pretty easily. The trolls in the front line here trying to fight their way through the, the dwarves. Got terrible axe guards here. Hacking at these boys. They're knocking them aside though, like they don't even matter. Go, Dwarven Warriors are starting to lose as you expected. But it looks like the Mountain Trolls also losing. I think Crossbow Fire is doing a lot of damage to them. The Ballista here is definitely in a lot of trouble. If I was the good and, ba the good and bad player, the, good uh, the Goblin player, I mean, but I mean, also, yes, good and bad. I'd get these guys around. I'd sneak around and just try and take out the, uh, the Ballista. But it looks like he's actually going to dismount it anyway, which kind of achieves the objective they need. Yeah, the Wargs go in absolutely ham in here. Not really killing stuff. I mean, they might kill these crossbows, which looks like what they were aiming for. Which is exactly, I feel like, the purpose they need to go for is archers. Archers, I feel like, is the aim of a, of a war. And these guys look very different to the uh, Isengard ones, which I do like the look of them. These look much more like the ones from The Hobbit. These are awesome. Again, massive thanks to the devs for allowing me to show these off. It's awesome. When the wargs eventually do get added in, they're going to look so good. This is going to be such a great addition. Yeah, they're going to buy a too. Actually, they're able to, you know, put up a decent fight here. I'll probably bounce out of this fight, though, soon and try and rear charge Erebor over here because they're kind of pushing back the goblins a few hours. But the Iron Guards are definitely winning their fight. Stabbing up these boys. Doing what Iron Guards do best. Slay goblins. Um, but you can see here the trolls are broken through. Looks like a little warg unit has uh, also helps in that the warg pack there. Um, to uh, to rear charge the gob the uh, why do I want to call the dwarves the goblins today? I don't know. To rear charge the dwarves. And now the yeah, the trolls are through, they're gonna just probably take out that ballista crew in a moment. And this front is starting to collapse. The trolls can also get stuck into these arable axe uh, warriors if they wanted to. Thorin on the uh, flank over here is actually fighting off against goblin bodyguards and he's losing this fight. I mean he's getting outnumbered. Can see Thorin. Oh gosh. That stone uh, formation not helping. There you go. He's got his Warhammer out. He's got a, it looks like it's very much like Dane's Warhammer. I don't know if he's going to get a unique one or whether it's like he picked up Dane. I think he has just fallen. There you go. Yeah. Stone Helm has just died. Thorin is dead. And uh, yeah, we are going to see a collapse of Dwarven morale. I feel like with the less units, like, yeah, those Dwarven warriors break. And yeah, that front line breaks as well. You can see, yeah, crossbow starting to go. They're not going to hold if they've got no general, but the more elite units are holding on a little longer, as they should. Arab, Arab boy axe guards still fighting on here. The wargs are still alive. They're still, you know, causing a few uh, bits of damage here. If they can just get around the back of stuff, just rear charge them, that'll just really help with their kills, I'd imagine. They're probably a good rear charge unit. Like we've seen, they don't want to charge heavy infantry head on. They're not going to do any damage. They're best going after lighter stuff and archers, and then also going uh, for rear charges. 
So yeah, if you ever want to get involved in some Dawn of Stays battles and want to uh, get involved with some uh, cool scenarios, we're going to have to do some more now. Um, then we're getting more unique generals. I feel like I'm going to have to do a Battle of Dale sort of scenario with like Dane and Stonehelm. But yeah, you're uh, welcome to join my Discord. The link is down below in the description. It's the best place to go to get involved in any Dawn of Stays battles. And if you haven't got the Dawn of Stays mod, you should check it out. I'll leave a link for it in the description as well. It's the best mod around for Attila at the moment. And there you go. We have a Peric victory for the Goblins. And we'll quickly end the replay and have a look at the end results. See, so, uh, this is from... Um, Junitun's as perspective, oh no, Aragorn Alessa's perspective, sorry, as the goblins. Um, he got 130 kills with his goblin blade warriors here. 83 kills with his general. I mean, that was slaying um, Stonehelm, so that's pretty good. The Marauders getting 116 kills is not too bad for them. Uh, his warg pack, which is the uh, wargs without uh, riders, getting 87 kills. Then we have the Gundabad wargs here, 216 kills for them. And that's pretty good, you know. Better than the, um, the wargs of Isengard. I feel like they might be a bit more effective. And then we have uh, Mountain Trolls here with 148 kills and 147 kills with the other Mountain Troll here. So both getting good results there. Then we have Junaton playing as Erebor. Uh, Stonehelm getting uh, 227 kills here. He did very, very well. Um, and then we've got uh, Erebor Axe Guards getting 194 kills. 108 kills with the Erebor Axe Guards here as well. Uh, Iron Guards are routing with really healthy numbers, but getting 189 kills. These guys would have racked on more kills. But yeah, then the crossbows, 77, 60, 65, 73, nothing outstanding there. But there you go, guys. That is today's Dawnless Days replay. Another sh uh, little showcase of what's to come in the future for Dawnless Days. I'm very excited. But yes, uh, if you did enjoy, do remember to leave a like, subscribe if you're around here, and a comment to show your support. And definitely go and check out the other uh, warg sort of replay that I covered. If you haven't already, it should be appearing on your screen now. But until next time, guys, I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.